conditional distribution and density function. The conditional distribution function, how do we write it as? fx of x given b, okay. So, we know that probability of a given b is nothing but probability of a given b. It can be written as probability of a intersection b divided by probability of b, okay. So, it is a intersection b in the numerator divided by probability of b in the denominator, okay. Similarly, prob uh, what is fx of x given b is nothing but probability of x less than or equal to x given b. So, what is that? In the numerator, we have the intersection of these two events. That is x less than or equal to x intersection b divided by probability of b. So, this is the conditional distribution function, okay. So, in this case, probability of b should be non-zero. Probability of b should be non-zero, okay. So, once we know the conditional distribution function, the density function is nothing but the derivative of distribution function, okay. Now, if you observe here, we have only one variable, yes or no? So, that is why we are differentiating this only with respect to x to find out fx of x given b. Okay, now we'll discuss what is conditional distribution and density function for the joint um, for more than two variables or two variables. Okay, so here we are considering two random variables. Okay, now for example, here what is point conditioning? Point conditioning is that so uh, we are finding the distribution function of one random variable. Assuming that the second random variable y has some specific point because only one point we are considering that is why it is called point conditioning okay. So, if you do not uh, take one, one value then it is called uh, conditional joint distribution function okay joint density function since we are taking only one value of uh, the second random variable that is why what is this called point conditioning okay. So, how do we define point conditioning here? What is that here? X is the first random variable and what is the second random variable here is belongs to Y, okay. That is why Y we will be defined like this. Y is having the value, Y values are defined like this, Y minus del Y less than Y less than or equal to Y plus del Y. This del Y is very small so that Y is equal to Y. Okay, so y will be defined only at y, okay. So, if del y is approaching 0, okay. So, like that we are getting one point of y. We have to get only one point of y, okay. So, for this event B, equation B, equation 1 can be written as, how do you write equation 1? So, equation 1 is nothing but x less than or equal to x intersection. What is y now? y is y minus del y, okay, less than capital Y less than or equal to Y plus del Y, yes or no? So, here in the place of B, we will be getting this term, okay? So, in the denominator also, we will be in the place of B, we get Y minus del Y less than capital Y less than or equal to Y plus del Y, okay? So, the same thing will be substituted for B here, okay? So, if you substitute that from the properties of joint density function. If you want to find out the probability of joint event where x value is varying between x1 and x2 and y value is varying between y1 and y2 from the properties of joint uh, density function, we know that it is equal to integral y1 to y2 integral x1 to x2 f x y of x comma y dx dy and also we know that the prob properties of density function we know that if you want to find out the prob, prob, uh, what is that probability between x1 and x2, that is probability of x1 less than x less than or equal to x2, it is given as integral x1 to x2 fx of x, uh, fx of x dx, okay. So, the same thing we will be substituting in the equation here. So, what is the numerator here? The numerator will be intersection of these two intersection of these two means the joint occurrence of the event x less than or equal to x okay and y value is between my y minus del y less than y less than or equal to y plus del y. So, what is x range? x range is minus infinity to x because x less than or equal to x norma. 
so x range is minus infinity to x whereas y range is y minus del y to y plus del y so y minus del y to y plus del y f x comma y okay v1 v2 dv1 dv2 okay and similarly in the denominator what we have so what are the limits of v here it is y minus del y y plus del y f y of v dv okay so this is the equation we get for conditional uh, distribution function okay so this is the equation of conditional distribution function okay now we have two cases what is this conditional distribution function for point conditioning so here del y is approaching the value zero so that we get point conditioning okay now here we have two cases first case we are considering the discrete random variables for x and y and in the second case we will be considering continuous random variables for x and y okay so here x and y both are discrete random variables with the elements xi what are the elements of xi is i is equal to 1 2 3 so on n and the elements of y what are the elements of random variable y will be yj whereas j value is varying from 1 2 3 so on m so it is y1 y2 so on ym respectively okay then what is the probability of joint occurrence of xi and yj joint occurrence of xi and yj is given as probability of xi comma yj okay so that is the joint occurrence of both xi and yj so in that case what is the probability density function f y of y probability density function f y of y is nothing but it is summation i is equal to 1 to m p of y uh, y j del of y minus y j okay we know that in the density function we will be having impulse function whereas in the distribution function we will be having step function okay now it is function of only one random variable so we will be having only one uh, impulse function okay now if you have two random variables x and y then we have to consider the probability of joint occurrence of those two random variables and the impulse function corresponds to x the impulse function corresponds to y okay and we will be having two summations one is for first random variable the second is for the second random variables okay so here in this case in the equation 4 we have only one random variable that is why we have only one summation okay so what is the um, density function for one random variable is f y of y is equal to summation j is equal to 1 to n p of y j del of y minus y j and for two random variables what is f x comma y of x comma y is given as summation i is equal to 1 to n summation j is equal to 1 to m p of x i y j del of x minus x i del of y minus y j okay so this is our equation 4 and 5 okay now what is that we are doing we are taking the specific value of y that is equal to y k so what is j here j will be equal to k so j value is varying from 1 to m no so we have m elements here total number of elements will be m but we are interested with only one specific value of y k okay that is j value is equal to k if j is equal to k here what happens here this becomes y j no p of y j y j is become y k and this becomes y minus y k okay now since j is equal to k at j is equal to k del of y minus y k will be having value one only at y is equal to y k so that is why f y of y is equal to p of y k similarly in this equation six y what is that we are taking y k so that is why this second summation we will be evaluating only at j is equal to k so what happens this yj becomes yk this becomes del of y minus yk so this value at y is equal to yk this value becomes one okay this summation will be evaluated only at j is equal to k so that is why what is this yj becomes yk okay so that is why the equation six can be written as see here the equation six can be written as the second summation we are evaluating at j is equal to k p of x i y j del of x minus x i del of y minus y j 
now yj becomes yk no so that is why del of y minus yk will be having value 1 at y is equal to yk so that is why the remaining part of the equation will be evaluated at j is equal to k so that is why here instead of yj what will be having yk so it is summation i is equal to 1 to n p of x i y k del of x minus x i okay since we are taking only one value of for k so that is why so one value for uh, y that is why only y term will be eliminated not x term x term will be like that only now we substitute this in the equation 4 so if you substitute this in the equation 4 and we have taken del y is equal to 0. So see this equation 4, all of you. Okay. So in the equation 4, what is this? Del y will be equal to 0. So we are evaluating y at y k. We are evaluating y at y k. So we will be having only one integration. What is that integration? Integral minus infinity to x. Okay. And y term, y is equal to y k. It becomes y is equal to y k. Okay. So that is why we will be having only one integration where y becomes yk. So y term we don't have, only x term will be having, okay. And uh, in the denominator also, see this equation for the denominator, this will be evaluated at y is equal to yk, okay. So since it is evaluated at y is equal to yk, what is that we have in the denominator here, will be see here. Since we are evaluating at y is equal to yk, what fy of y? f y of y will be is equal to p of y k. So we will be substituting p of y k here. Okay. So now you just see this, we are integrating with respect to x. Okay. So what is this impulse function becomes? Impulse, integral of impulse will be step. Okay. That is why in the numerator we have summation i is equal to 1 to n p of x i comma y k u of x minus x i divided by p of y k, okay. Now, so if you differentiate this equation seven, if you differentiate this equation seven, we get what is that density function, conditional density function for point conditioning. We are taking only one point for point conditioning, okay. So in that way, so what is the differentiation of step function? Differentiation of step function will be impulse, okay. So we have the same equation. Instead of step here, we will be having impulse, okay. So this is the uh, conditional distribution function and density function for discrete random variable in the case of point conditioning. Both x and y are continuous random variables. In case two, both x and y are continuous random variables. And what is del y here? Del y is very small, yes or no? Del y we have considered it as very small. So the equation one can be written as, so what is that? Uh, this is the same equation, whatever we have written in the previous case, the equation four is the same thing. That is integral y limits. What are the y limits? Y minus del y to y plus del y. Okay, what are the x limits? Minus infinity to x, f x y of v1, v2, dv1, dv2 divided by, okay. What are, that is uh, the y limits are integral y minus del y to y plus del y f y of v dv. Okay. Now what is that here we have considered? We have considered that del y is very small. Okay. So that is why we are differentiating with respect to y. If you different, if you integrate, sorry, if you, we are integrating with respect to y. If you integrate with respect to y, what do you get? We get 2 delta y. Okay. So whereas here in the place of V2, we get Y. We are integrating with respect to Y. So in the place of V2, we are getting Y. And what is the integration uh, value after substituting the limits? We get 2 del Y in the numerator. In the denominator also, this uh, integration will be eliminated. We are integrating with respect to Y now so that we get F Y of Y. So where are the, after substituting the limits, what is the value we get? 2 del y, okay. So, so 2 del y is approaching the value 0. That is why this is very small. This two will get cancelled, okay. That is why what is the conditional distribution function here? We will be having only one integral. See that even though it is two random variables, we will be having only one integral. Integral minus infinity to x, f x y of 
v1 of y dv1 divided by fy of y okay we are integrating only with respect to x that's all okay and after uh, differentiating this the, what is the density function density function is inter, uh, differentiation of distribution function okay density function is inter, uh, differentiation of distribution function so after differentiating this what we get fy of x given y is equal to y will be so what is the differentiation of this is fx of y now we are differentiating with respect to x no that is why this integral will get cancelled so we are substituting the variable x itself here so it is f x y of x comma y divided by f y of y okay so this equation equation 11 so how we are writing f x of x given y is equal to some specific value y no so instead of writing like this capital y is equal to y we can directly write f x of uh, small x by small y okay what is that value it is f x y of x comma y divided by f y of y okay and uh, we also show that this equation see here ma f x of x comma y what is the numerator f x comma y of x comma y what is the denominator what is the denominator here we have y no the same y we have in the denominator so similarly f y of y comma x f y of y comma x will be numerator will be same f x y x comma y of x comma y what is the denominator here is f x of x okay 